You're watching. You're watching. You're watching. You're watching West Hartford. West Hartford Community Television. Community Television. Community Television. For the community. 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 By the community. By the community. By the community. By the community. For the community. By the community. And it's a wrap. Happy summer! Thanks for tuning into Cameras Rolling. So I'm really excited about this show because this is one of my favorite things to do in the summer is, is see plays because mm -hmm. it's not that that rush that you would feel when everybody goes. It's more of a like a casual enjoy ourselves and then I like to stay at the theater and frolic. <laughs> Go to the restaurants, hang out with your friends. So my guests today are Rob Ruggiero. Excellent. Yay, I said it right. And Jacques Lamar, who may look familiar. <laughs> I, was say, I think, think this is he's my, my record breaking fourth appearance <laughs> on cameras rolling. He's my he's my Alec Baldwin, right? Yes. Uh, that, yes. <laughs> I have to catch up to you, Jacques. Yes, definitely. Say. But um, so we're we're gonna be talking about Jacques' new play, our noted esteemed play right here. Uh, and we're also gonna be talking about theater works. So let, let's start with, with the play, okay? Tell, okay. The, the name of the play is Raging Skillet, which is a great name. Yes, <laughs> uh, and it's the name of, of a book um, that was written by Chef Rossi. It's a memoir with recipes called The Raging Skillet, which is also the name of her business, her catering business. Uh, so I can't take credit for the name. Uh, I can let Rob take credit for chopping the the off of the name. <laughs> so it's just Raging Skillet, but... Uh, but yeah, it's it's based on this book and, mm -hmm. and on this woman's uh, life, uh, particularly her relationship with her mother and with food. And uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it's really it's funny. Fun. So now you've, this is your other plays there where I loved I Lost on May Spaghetti. Yeah. Which Rob directed. Yes. I did. Was that our first collaboration? It was. That was our first collaboration. As playwright yeah. and director. Right. And then you have a, a vignette and Christmas on the Rocks. Yes. Which also Rob directed. Yes. Yes. So now, did, did you guys know each other prior to this, or did you just meet here through the Hartford? Uh, well, um, I worked at Theater Works for two years, but oh, we I knew each other that. before that when I was working at Hartford Stage. Yes, I met him when he was working at Hartford Stage, and he worked for us, and then he abandoned us. Aww. Yes. <laughs> I had to go away to come home. Which... <laughs> so. He's great at what, but you know, I mostly now, in the history of our friendship, Mm -hmm. Know Jacques as a playwright. Yes, uh, and that's and that's our relate. That's the core of our relationship. He's he does other amazing things, but that's that's his connection to theater works. Yeah, right. Okay, and and also since you did, I loved I lost I made spaghetti. Of course, people are people are going to say so. You're partial to foodies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know they say write what you know, and you don't get a body like this by uh, <laughs> by uh, avoiding food. So. Uh, I mean, I love um, I love food, and I love uh, you know personal stories, and so I was I gravitated towards towards the uh, I loved I lost I made spaghetti after meeting Julia very briefly, Julia Malucci, who wrote the book, and I read it, and I was like, this could be a really wonderful, fun play, and the whole concept of inter interweaving the food. Um, actually, is a bit of an idea that came from another show that Theater Works did many years ago called Mondo Manja, which is actually a show I did not see, but everyone years later were still raving about the novelty of someone cooking on stage. Oh. And I think nowadays cooking at home is a novelty for a lot of people. Yes. And so when she's making the pasta from scratch in that show, um, it's, you know, for some people, it's a jaw-dropping experience. It's running up in Massachusetts right now, and uh, as soon as the pasta started coming out of the pasta press and looked like spaghetti for the first time, 
people in the audience gave it like a round of applause. Oh yeah, it's it, amazing. It, yeah. It's, yeah. And everyone loves a, a home cooked meal. And when I was working at Hartford Stage, they did a show called The Cook and it was set around the Cuban Revolution and she never actually cooked anything on stage. She just did some food prep, but people came in you know, it's sort of like when you put babies and animals on stage. People think it's like something they've never seen before. Yes. So, um, not to dismiss the magic of it, because I think that there is something magical about kind of coming around together in the kitchen and the kind of conversations you have. I was just going to say that the kitchen and cooking and being around somebody who's cooking is is relaxing and, and an open place to talk. Right. But I, I yeah. want to point out to your, um, I mean, I think it needs to be pointed out that the plays are quite different, and I yes. think in really good ways. I mean, I Love De Last I Made Spaghetti was very food-centric. I mean, part of the event was so paralleled with her, kind of this, this meal coming out of her, mm -hmm. and, and her working out her relationship issues. It was, we always have to say, it was kind of like bad dates with food. Yes. Yeah, but it was, it was very unique. What I think is wonderful and special about Raging Skillet is certainly there's food that happens, but right. but it's much more the vibe of this person, and it's much less food centric. I mean, it's a cooking demonstration, which which Chef Rossi in real life hates to do. She loves to speak and tell stories, but this central relationship of mother daughter is is really I, I think primary into the event of the play. And it relates back to her connection to food. Would you yeah. say that's right. true? And the food really is more, uh, as, as Rob said, it's less integral to the plot and more illustrative of who she is. She does these yeah. kind of white trash twists on Jewish cooking. <laughs> and so, well put. Uh, you know, and so I, that you know, she'll be the first to say it. I mean, she also does really fine, uh, fine cooking as well. But one of the things she she calls herself a punk rock caterer and she comes at it from a rebel standpoint so she says that when uh, when people call and say they're having their wedding and they would like chicken cordon bleu she hangs up on them <laughs> uh, you know she says if you call me and tell me tell me you want to do like a Jamaican white trash Creole whatever themed dinner she's like totally your your caterer so we try to use the cooking and raging skillet to really illustrate how she has a definite twist on how she approaches food and how she approaches life. Right. And, it, and it's also communal. I mean, there's something that happens at the end of the play that is a not scary audience participation, but it's it's something that is interactive with the audience, like kind of a celebration. Right. Um, I don't want to surprise. No spoilers. Yes. All right, no spoilers. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, no. But she's. I, I think she might be ready to ask. No, what that no, might no, be. no, ah. no. I'm not. But you know. But the the one thing I I wanted to. To say which I which I, I'm sure you you find with with directing and you find with writing these mm -hmm. is food the way it resonates with all of us the emotional impact whether it's emotional eating or I can smell something and have this nostalgic rush and it can bring out heavy heavy feelings of being of wanting of having and wanting comfort and nur and nurturing as a child. Yeah. yeah, and it's funny because one one of the things when when I watched I loved I last time made spaghetti you know I, I didn't have those my 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 grandma was a Minnesota cook so there they, they say um, uh, green Jello is a vegetable you know? <laughs> so it's not like everybody had a lot That's of experience fantastic. and I was sitting next to 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 one of Jacques' friends um, uh, Elizabeth. And she brought on the pasta thing and I and I'm like Ducky what is that I had no idea what it was. And it, it's so neat to, to hear no <laughs> how, how, how everybody re relates. There's pasta coming out I of know. Well, and no, I mean, to me, it, it looked like like a weapon. Like, <laughs> like, like you know, when like World War II. Machine gun. Yeah. No, 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 no. I was like, what is it? But when, uh, That's fascinating. You know, when we, yeah. we did uh, my play Born Fat at, at um, Seven Angels in Waterbury, it's, even though there's no cooking involved, the show is obviously very much about this person's relationship with food. And and she and I share a lot of struggles in that regard. But she, you know, her her story is so much more extreme. And right. so, uh, you know, I, I've written a lot of other plays on a lot of different subjects, but I think um, 
food and women are, are two things that I'm drawn to uh, in my writing. And so I, you know, this, uh, this play, Raging Skillet, you know, is about this woman and, and how her mom set her on the path to be a chef unwittingly and how her mom uh, you know, kind of sort of bombs in on her, her evening when she's introducing her, her book to the world. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Of oh, fun. yeah. And it's so, it's so insightful because food can be very healing as well. Mm. Yeah. And, and, it, and it bonds fa family relationships. And also, like, everybody's journey with food is so different. Mm. Like, I, I connected so much more with the, the food connection to spaghetti because I'm Italian. Yeah. And so all those things were like, were immediate responses to me. You know, this is a, this, her connection to food is through a different upbringing, a different cultural um, um, experience. Right. So her, it formed her as a person and as a chef. Yeah. Right. Oh, and, and a fun being part of that, that demographic. I love the, the music. Oh. Because it just it it takes me back and and it really does set the scene nicely. Well, that's something I will say that I would say is a common denominator in you. You're a music lover. Mm -hmm. You have a great knowledge base of music, and music is typically an integral factor. And I, what I, as a playwright, he's very specific about the songs that he hears. Mm -hmm. A couple of times in our history, I convinced him to change it. <laughs> and, and, and I would say for the better. I would say for the better. I'm I, laughing because he wanted a different song at the end of his Christmas on the Rocks piece. And I was mm. like, no, it has to be this. And Rob picked the absolute perfect piece for it. It has everyone in tears at the end oh, of the show. Oh, it's such a sweet piece in Christmas yeah. on the Rocks. But it that's is. what that collaboration <laughs> is about. And he yeah. knows music and is, his connection and specificity is far superior to mine. But, but um, that's what makes him fun when he, when he writes his pieces. They, and they really help inform the moment right. in yeah. fun ways. And Raging Skillet has has way more music than either of those yeah. pieces um, because she calls herself a punk rocker. And so the, the show is not only um, Rossi, the chef, and her mother, uh, who's just known as Mom on stage, her real name was Harriet, uh, but there's a third character, and it's a DJ, and he he plays other parts in it, but he is basically providing the musical tapestry of her of her life. So he's he's uh, he's going to be on stage almost as much as mom, Everybody. I think. Yeah. yeah. There's three there's three characters, and you should you should tell her who's playing mom. Actually, that's exciting. Yeah, we're really excited. <coughs> um, uh, Barbara Rosenblatt um, is playing mom, and she, uh, for viewers of Orange is the New Black, will know uh, her as Rosa. Um, I don't want to give massive spoilers away, but she has the best moment at the end of season two. She is the grand yes. finale. <laughs> uh, and you, if you're trying to remember who Rosa is, she was the one who had cancer throughout her prison term and therefore has uh, has no hair. So yes. um, in our Amazing show, she will, have she will have she actually does feature <laughs> hair in real life. Uh, and, She's, uh, what a, it's such an exciting um, gift for us, to, you know, in a season that, you know, had started with Richard Dreyfus. And, you know, we had we had a great a lot of lovely, blessed um, success in the season yes. and to cap it this is the last show of our 31st season to have Barbara being in Raging Skillet is really exciting for us right yeah, right. absolutely so okay so speaking of, of Richard Dreyfus, the, the theater works is just soaring it's doing really well oh, thank with, you. with you at the helm and congratulations to thank that thank you so much so you've got a very new exciting season we just announced our 32nd season um, a few days ago 32nd yes so I'm very excited we we you know I was kept juggling titles and directors and I waited to the rush of all the other announcements were over and so we've had a, such a positive response so would you like me to write it down yes quickly? please um, we're opening um, our season this fall with a production, a production of The Wolves. The Wolves is a play that was a Pulitzer Prize finalist, and it's t a cast of ten, and nine young women and who are part of a soccer team that have gathered uh, since their youth, and they're now going off to college. So, um, and an adult, but I don't want to give that 
part away. <clears throat> but it's exciting that we're going to have 10 people and nine young women, and we're going to be a combination of uh, a couple of heart students on the heart school mm -hmm. and a couple of local talent. Which I love hearing that. Yeah. Obviously. And then some, and a lot of them, the New York, New York talent. As we, I wanted to expand the size of cast, and this piece of repertoire felt very important to do. And, and it's a female playwright. And my artistic associate, Eric Ort, is directing for the first time at the oh. theater doing it. Oh, nice. Then oh. our second show is a production of Constellations. Constellations was a show that was on Broadway a couple of seasons ago with Jake Gyllenhaal. And um, I'm fascinated by the piece. It's structurally very different. And we're planning a really kind of bold, immersive, theatrical experience with it. It's all I can say oh. right now, but I'm, I'm exploring live music and and re restructuring the, the, the theater a little bit. So that's what we're, we're, we're studying. The third show is a show that I wanted to do from when I read it multiple months ago, and it's Matthew Lopez's um, product, uh, play, The Legend of Georgia McBride. Now Matthew was a resident playwright at Hartford Stage yeah. at one point. He did Reverberation. He did uh, The Whipping Man, a very famous play. But this is a this is a comedy, really, heart about this Elvis, out of luck Elvis impersonator, young in his twenties with a pregnant wife, and he ends up in this little bar in Texas and ends up becoming a famous drag queen. And his name is Georgia McBride. Oh, how fun is that? <laughs> you know, there's oh, all ways you come up fun. with your drag name. And it, yeah. that leads to um, some revelation about what the definition of family is and, and accepting yourself beyond stereotypes. He ends up being really good at it. And he's a straight married guy having a baby. So, huh. um, and it's I think it's a really fun story. I haven't seen it yet. The fourth uh, uh, show is a production of The Invisible Hand which has just received um, multiple Connecticut Critics Circle nominations in the play for a show they did at Westport Country Playhouse. Mm -hmm. And that director is coming to do our production, oh. which, which you are the first to know. Um, so uh, we're excited and um, it there. And then we're closing our season. That play is, um, by, is by the person who wrote Disgraced. And it's a really kind of provocative, intense, but beautifully written a story about a, a finance guy who is held hostage in the Middle East. Um, it, it's, it's riveting, really, truly riveting. And then we're closing our season with, I think probably the bravest thing I've done in terms of programming a, a play called Hand to God about, um, and it was done off Broadway and on Broadway to great success. But it's, it pushes the boundaries of all, in all kinds of ways. But the central character is a young man who makes a puppet in a Christian Bible school, and the puppet becomes possessed by the devil and basically oh, it's takes hilarious. over his life. And it's hilarious oh, and God. provocative. Um, yeah, I saw it on Broadway. It is, uh, it is <laughs> jaw-droppingly it? funny. Is it, is, and is it it's, still on Broadway? No. 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 It, it's, it's funny. It's beyond irreverent. It, it goes probably two steps beyond the Book of Mormon, uh, and so it's it's. Uh, but it's to, also yeah. touching too. It's also touching, but you have to fasten your seatbelt and yeah. for a ride that's going to push boundaries. And you know, and if you you that's have a weak stomach for that, it's tricky. <laughs> but wow. I think our audience, I believe in sounds... the audience, is ready for it, and it really like New York audiences loved it. And you just have to know that, like Book of Mormon, it right. it pokes fun, it offends a little, but all all ultimately for a really for the greater good. And it sounds very compelling. Yeah. You know, it's funny. The the, the first year I, I had my cameras rolling show. Did you know that the puppeteer, the most famous one in the world, teaches at UConn? I Bart, do. Yes, Bart was on my show, and his love of puppets is so fascinating and he's so passionate he brought them all to my set and he had a little story oh. about each one and and I so ever since I had him on the show 
um, I, I know it was it's such a labor of love for the people who make the puppets. So it's it's fun to look I at. I love honestly yeah. God, if I were ever to explore another aspect of our business, mm -hmm. I'm fascinated Same by here. puppetry. Same here. Like I, mean, I, I would, I would have to loved to go it. like to take a class. <laughs> well, maybe you can start doing oh. some puppetry at theater works. Right. I mean, it's, well, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and also another, well, this particular fun... show does have three, two or three puppets in it. Oh, Hands his from from yeah. a, from his, I'm sure, from his. Well, I mean, no, in the play, we don't know who's making. Oh, the you day, don't know who's making. Which him. we talked about because we know Yukon's out there. Yeah, I mean, but, but yeah, because th but because we're Bart, doing a show with puppets. Oh yeah, and yeah, which really, is really, really, and uh, really interesting. I think element that our audience hasn't seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so okay. Now I wanted to also ask you about directed plays. When when you have the the play right there, how does it? As far as I'm, I'm sure that there's pluses and minuses because when you read a play and you have your own subjective vision what is it like when when you need to collaborate with the playwright so are you sir so you're talking about when we're doing a brand new play yes. versus a play that's been published like no, we're like, the first like, one um, to do like, it like Jacques Ray, Ray yeah, and well, it's interesting. and like um, I love the last of my spaghetti as I, for I love the last time I made spaghetti I was the director as mm -hmm. well as the producer in that one so we so right. we responded in that way and I I don't want to be a writer I don't think of myself as a writer so I feel like my job as the director is to question you know does this is the story clear is the event clear is this is this going off on a tangent? We're having a hard time in rehearsal getting this scene to land. I tried three things. Can you tell us why you wrote it this way or will you come look at it? Those are the kind which, of things. Which must be a real luxury to have him there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. that was the thing because some, so sometimes when, when you have plays and you and the, the actors make their own choices, Director makes it's, their own choices. It's and a it's tricky not, position it's because very, yeah. it's almost it's easier. It's so nice to have the playwright say, well, th this is what it was intended for. But it's yeah. also easier sometimes when you have a play that's published and you can't change the writing. So when you have the playwright there yeah. and you can change the oh, writing, yeah, that's then all of a sudden he or she feels like now they have the director coming at them or the actor coming at them. Oh. Can we say it well, this way? Right. And everybody wants it to be great, but there is someone in the room that can change it, and that's a lot of pressure. So sometimes yes. I tell the playwright, you know, you should go away for a little while while we're exploring, and then come back. But why don't you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, you know, it's interesting because there are some theaters that have taken my script and don't invite me to be part of rehearsals or whatever, and and I see it the same time everyone else does, <laughs> sometimes to my delight, sometimes to my dismay. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, Theatre Works is really good about, you know, uh, being involved in the process. And it's, I mean, it is tricky because it is your baby and sometimes someone comes back and says, you know, your baby's not as cute as you thought. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but everyone well, wants your baby to be cute. Yes. And everyone wants the play to work and everyone is, heading in the same direction and there are times when you're like you know you'll receive feedback and you say okay I don't agree and I'm gonna kind of you know not dig in my heels in an unpleasant way but no, say this is why I feel this that. is important but there are other times I, I where I would like this to stay for now That's yeah usually what you I mean done. I would say with Raging Skillet um, the process has been uh, probably the most involved in terms of of um, the artistic team at Theatre Works and the director helping make it a better play. And I think what audiences are going to see when they come to see it is something that is very different than what I originally wrote. Not necessarily mm -hmm. in intention, but in how I told the mm -hmm. story. Yeah. And I think they're going to see a better play than what I wrote. Um, and a lot of that is the process, uh, comes from the process of the direct working with the director and then the actors who is coming John, in. John right. Simpkins. John Simpkins. Yes. He's, he's directing Raging Scout. He's a wonderful director. I wanted to have him at the theater for a while. I have a couple of other big projects going on outside. So I introduced him to Jacques and they hit it off right away. He's oh great. perfect. He well, loves it. Well you know, I, I felt very, very special that I, I got to see the the reading. And, oh uh, right. Yes. 
Well, I he made some, loved it. it and it's, loved it. And it's changed yeah. since then. Yeah, and, and but it's it was it was very um, it was very com compelling. But at the same time, I related so much, especially to the mother daughter relationship. Yeah. I loved it's it. It's great. And you I know what's great about it. that is you know we had three great actors, but they weren't the actors for the show. In some right. cases, not the right age or the right vibe, but. You know, so that you felt that way just hearing a reading. Yes, just and from they the were words good. alone. Yeah. I think you'll even, even if we didn't change anything, when you have the real people playing the parts there, oh, I'm so excited. it changes. Because, yeah. you know, we have, you know, Barbara is going to bring an authentic, authentic, uh, authentic Jewish sensibility to that part, which will only elevate it. Yes. Right? Yeah. 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 And, uh, and the, the story is, it's interesting taking Rossi's life story and she puts it into a book and then taking it into a stage play requires um, a lot of change to her story, but also, you know, uh, maintaining, as, as Rob said, the authenticity of it. And right. so that she's not sitting in the audience going, I this don't know who this is. But she's been super supportive every step of the way. She's super excited about it. She's going to be around as much as she can. And oh, she'll that's be wonderful. signing her books. And where, and where, where is she based? She's based out of New York City. Oh, she is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I, and there's so much more in the book than I can fit into the play, but there's also a lot of stuff in the play that's not in the book, and a lot of those things come out of stories that I just hear on the phone with her. I'll be like, you know, what was your relationship with your mother in this regard? And all of a sudden, she'll <laughs> drop a bomb on, of some story that's <laughs> a hilarious. Really great story. And so then it becomes kind of Sophie's choice of which of these great stories do you include and which do you leave out. Right. And part of it is what's helping move this part of her life story forward. Oh. And, and then what you said, like to circle back to your original question, the director, the artistic director, are kind of the police a little bit to say, listen, that's a great story, but it's not moving the play forward. Right. You know, what's the event mm -hmm. of the play? Because yes. ultimately, you know, the playwright has to deliver a play. And and it's very unusual, you know, that um, this was a play that we talked about, um, that he got a, a commission from the Roberts Foundation, you know, some Thank support Thank you, Roberts there. Foundation. <laughs> to, <laughs> to do, but we had already decided we were on that track. And, you know, it's very unusual for, we do it a lot at our theater, for a theater to agree to produce the play without a play existing. But we have that faith in. Jeff. Oh, that is yeah. that's a wonderful leap of it's faith, really and it's such unusual. a compliment. It's really unusual. And yeah, I'm very grateful definitely. To have that kind of relationship with Rob. Okay, so we, we only have a couple minutes left. Where where can people find out more about the play? They can go online. Theaterworkshartford.org is always the best way these days because everything is there, including buttons to buy. Yeah, so you know? they, they don't have to call they anymore. They can call, but they can call. Call Theaterworks eight six zero five eight six zero. 527-7838-860-527-7838 and there's usually someone there in, during business hours. But theaterworkshartford.org is the best way to get the most up-to-date right. information. Right, and yeah. I'm so excited to see the plays of your of your season. And Jack, you, you have a website, I, I, right? I was convinced to become a subscriber this year because <laughs> oh, wow. I saw they were doing Raging Skillet and I thought I couldn't miss it. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so yes, he is a subscriber. I have a, I have a, I have a website, jacquelamarplaywright.com. Playwright.com. So yeah. people could find out more about what you're doing. Yes. And on Which? Facebook. He has a million people. Oh, I know. Yes. Yeah. Right? You yeah. All, you do Although all I'm that picky. stuff. I'm picky. I'm so. picky. Uh, but we're also, you tweet and stuff, right? I don't tweet. No, oh, he I tweet. don't tweet either. We're all. We need to tweet. No, we're all what what my, my daughter calls Facebook dinosaurs. Ah, uh, uh, on that it. note. <laughs> <laughs> That's a happy note. All right, so I will see you at the theater. We'll Thanks see you guys for the coming. Theater. Excited to have you back. You're going to come back again, my Alec Baldwin. I will. <laughs> Thank you. All right, you. you guys, I will see you. Thanks for tuning in to Cameras Rolling. I'm going to see you at the theater. Looking forward to it.